Barn. I'm uh, Dr. Jason Clear, and I'm an extension uh, beef cattle specialist and associate professor in the Department of Animal Science here at Texas A&M. And uh, this program, again, just a reminder, this creating success with market steers and, and breeding beef heifers uh, we came together from a couple of groups, the Southern Classic and the East Texas Show Star Series, which those two groups put together some great workshop shows uh, in the fall of each year. So be sure to look out for those uh, if you're in the eastern portion of the state or the central portion of the state. Uh, great learning opportunities as, as we get live again. Uh, as we kind of get started today, Dottie, this is going to be kind of our we're going to wind down for just a little bit. Uh, it is getting hot here in Texas and uh, outside. And, and one of the exciting things that's uh, beginning to happen here in the state of Texas, we started this series because of, you know, everybody's kind of locked away. And uh, now we've got the opportunity. I know our state and national junior shows are occurring. Uh, we just had having a few uh, little county fairs here locally uh, that are occurring, some of these summer shows and jackpot shows and we've actually uh, uh my sons we got to go to a jackpot show a couple of weeks and i know there's some schedule for this weekend so it's people are getting out and about and, and it's summertime and we're glad we're finally getting back to maybe a sense of normalcy and the big fun is that the kids are getting to show again so we'll wind down a little bit till we get into the fall and we'll, we'll address some additional topics but we look forward to what we're going to see today uh and as we address showmanship buddy you bet, Dr. Clear. The good news is, is that if folks are still eager to learn more, of course, we always have these recordings on our website at texasyouthlivestock.com. They can always follow our Facebook page, which I'd encourage them to do right now. Just click that little uh, thumbs up in the right hand corner, like our page, because we're always putting out stuff, um, resources related to beef cattle, as well as all the other species as well. So like you said, we're all excited to be getting out, uh, out and back to the real world. Um, but always, um, you know, Texas Youth Livestock and Agriculture, we're here providing education and resources all year round. So with that, let's get started talking about showmanship. Yeah, perfect, Dottie. Uh, when, you know, when, some, when we talked with Dr. Skaggs and his daughters a few weeks ago, we, we hit on kind of the big po uh, picture thinkings of them, and we talked about show halters and those types of things. But, you know, one of the things that, that I see a lot of times as, as a parent, but, but also as a superintendent at some major livestock shows is, you know, families that maybe show up to the ring and they just, they don't have the show halter put on right. And I, even as a judge, I see this, and it's really important to, to put the halter on correctly, the show halter, make sure it's positioned correctly because if it's too high, it maybe is a little bit uh, pushes into the eyes of the calf and it just doesn't uh, fit as well. Uh, it becomes a little harder for the kid to handle that animal. If it's too low, it may make their head look longer and maybe the animal doesn't look as fresh in her appearance. But also when it's too low, it takes away from the, the, the uh, exhibitor able to utilize the halter as a tool to direct that calf as well. So proper position is really important. For our family, what we try to do is we, we make sure we try to work with these calves at home a couple of times with the show halter on them. Uh, that way we kind of get through that process because if you put a show halter on the first time and they've never experienced the chain and just the difference of it, uh, and you do it right before you're going into the show ring, you could get into some problems there and, uh, you know, maybe a little excitement with your heifer or steer. So it's always a good bet to, to work on this at home uh, and adjust the halter and everything else. Uh, again, a little bit on briefly, on, we talked a little bit about types of halters. Uh, for my family and, and kind of, you know, my concept of when we're thinking about the show cattle deal, uh, again, everybody does things different, but this is just the way that we we do our family, and I've done it forever. And uh, my family and the boys have had uh, great success uh, at the major show level as well as the county show level. And and this is just kind of the way we do it. And one of the things that we do is we try to keep things simple. And I think simple is better when we're thinking about show halters and show equipment as well. Because as a judge, I'm more interested in seeing the quality of the animal versus maybe a lot of bells and whistles that may come on a show halter. So a couple of key concepts. So if you have a, a you know, going back to a little bit on our uh, breeding and genetics, cattle really have two different colors. Uh, they're either a black background or they're a red background. Uh, and then we have dilution and spotting and different things as well. 
So if you keep it simple and you think black background and red background calf, so a red background calf color is gonna have a red show halter or, or a brown show halter. If it's a black background calf, you're gonna have a black one. So when we think of black background, that would also include solid black. It also could include a gray or smut or something like that. That would be a Charlet cross. If it's a red background, it could be a solid red, and that could be a shorthorn or a limousine, uh, something like that. Or it could be a yellow or a cream colored, which would be the combination of a, a Charlet uh, as well as a red background animal. Uh, Hereford cattle, we're typically going to think on a red halter as well. So if you keep that concept there, red background, black background, red or black halter, it keeps it pretty simple on which, which halter we choose for which color of animal. Then we take it from a step there, and, and you know, there's a lot of preferences and so on. Uh, again, we just like just a simple leather halter, not any rhinestones and different things on those. Uh, we like to see the halter kind of blend in with the animal. Uh, this particular halter, if you look at it, uh, this particular company, I think this is a Weaver brand halter, uh, they, they've got a, some a wrap on it, and so it kind of softens that chain a little bit. Uh, we, a lot of times, we'll just take vet wrap, and that's the same color of the halter, and we'll wrap that chain as well if it, maybe the calf is a little sensitive up under the jaw. The other thing, is, and this is especially true for parents with young kids, that uh, maybe have real sensitive hands, that first year or two of showman, that this chain can be a little bit of a challenge. And I've seen kids in the show ring where they're struggling to lead that heifer or steer because it's really, it's pinching their hand. And so if you'll wrap that chain, at least the first few inches of that to create a handle for that exhibitor, it'll soften that chain and it makes it easier on them as well. Um, we choose, and the, you know, the, the show halter that we use it's just a round nose uh, halter. I know that some, especially in the Brahmin, straight purebred Brahmin, they may decide to use maybe a wider nosed halter. For most of your breeds, the smaller round nose halter uh, just gives the animal a little more fresh in appearance and it doesn't detract from the quality of the animal as well uh, with that. And so those are some key things. Um, again, your typical show halter is gonna have the chain and lead on one side. Uh, you can see this lead is fairly short. Uh, these leads, we probably cut off uh, another foot and a half of this lead from when, we, when it was purchased. Um, if you've got a young exhibitor and maybe a little unruly animal, you may want a longer lead. Uh, this size lead, um, when, the, when the kid is holding it, it's not distracting and it's not getting tangled up in things. So, the little shorter the lead, the little bit better you have. The problem is, and I've seen exhibitors that, you know, they cut that lead off to where they've only got this much lead left. And the problem is if you get out into the show ring and even sometimes gentle animals can get a little spooked and distracted. Uh, if you only have just a little bit of that lead, it can slip out of the hand pretty easily. So that little bit of extra of that is, is really kind of handy at times. And again, I'm not gonna say that your animal's gonna get away but uh, I like to leave just a little extra lead on these animals just in case we get one that's maybe a little unruly or something spooks them in the ring. Your exhibitor has something to hold on to to make sure the animal doesn't get, get loose with that. So that's kind of your typical show halter uh, with that. Just kind of the, you know, as far as questions that we get of when do you put the show halter on? Uh, you know, typically we will, uh, if we've got one animal or two animals, we may put that show halter on uh, right before we get them up and get them ready to go into the show ring. If there's a whole string of animals, you may decide that, uh, you know, as you get them blown out and, and ready to go to the show ring before you tie them down to uh, let them rest, uh, you know, a lot of these guys with big strings will go ahead and put those show halters on at that point in time. That way you can get them all adjusted, tie those cattle down, and then as they need to go to the show ring, uh, then you've already got the show halter on, you can send them to the trim chute or wherever to get ready uh, before they go into the show ring. So the big thing is to give yourself a little bit of time uh, to get that, that show halter on. And so when we put that show halter on, and we may have to get a little bit closer here, uh, every animal's gonna be a little different. And uh, this heifer here, 
I'll tell you, she's just a little bit uh, antsy. She doesn't like you to mess around her head. We've been working on that uh, a little bit of trying to calm her down, but that's just kind of the way she is. She's just a little bit headstrong and doesn't like it as much. And so <clears throat> for us, we're going to take it a little slow when we put the halter on her because she does get a little bit stirred up, but we'll put that show halter on. And one of the things that you want to do when you put that show halter on is put it into a, put it on in a fashion and putting this chain on to where whenever you pull the rope halter up, it's not tangled up uh, in that. Uh, I've seen a lot of times where, you know, an exhibitor gets to the show ring and they can't get the rope halter off because it's kind of tied up with this uh, leather halter. And uh, then they try to hold their arm around their neck and, and uh, to try to unchain it and move, reposition the halter. And ultimately they're at the Houston Livestock Show or some other major show. Uh, there's people everywhere and then the calf gets loose and then we've got a problem with that. And so if you'll take the time to put this halter on correctly, when you get to the show ring, get ready for that exhibitor to go into the ring, you slip the halter off and the transition's easy. The other factor is if you have problems with pulling that halter at the ring and, and the heifer gets all worked up because you're fighting her, uh, the exhibitor, the kid gets worked up as well, it just creates a lot of anxiety for both the animal and the heifer. And so this is something that's a minor detail that, that I, you know, I think is very important that you need to pay attention to. And so, you know, as you put that halter on the chain, we've got the halter on, and so then we'll run the chain up under the, the rope halter, and then we'll come around, I'll move around the other side. Settle down. And we slip that chain up under the rope halter there. And this is something that's kind of a minor detail that I, I, you know, it's something that's a pet peeve of mine and others is that I like to put the snap facing out. And the main reason is so that that, that latch on that snap's not pushing up against the jaw of that heifer. So you can see now where we've got the chain is underneath that halter there. So we'll flip around to the other side. And one of the things that, that I like to do personally, and it takes just a little extra time, now I could take this heifer and we could go straight to the show ring with her um, and, you know, be ready to go. But I like to do a couple of things uh, on these heifers uh, is to make sure the positioning of the halter is right. So make sure we've got it taken up enough or maybe it's not, it needs to be let out some, but to make sure that nose lead, that nose part of this halter is in the right position on this heifer. The other thing is that I like to go ahead and take this rope halter off at the stall just to make sure we've got that halter placed on properly as well. So with that, quit Earl. We'll pull it. Stop. Stop. We'll work that halter around the back side of her head. Okay. So then I want to show you kind of that position of that, that halter. And so you can see this heifer here as we look at it, we've got the position of that halter just about two inches below her eye there. Um, you can see the side of that halter fits in right below that eye and it's really not pushing in her eye. If we move this up too high and we took it up too much, this halter would be pushing in her eye and that would be uh, not very uh, attractive or it really wouldn't be uh, comfortable to the heifer as well. It's not too low on her nose, so it makes her look long headed. So it's just the right length there as far as the this particular heifer again, uh, this halter, we showed this heifer about two weeks ago, and, and, and so we kind of already had the halter adjusted right. Uh, but at, that, at this point in time, you can see I've got my adjustment right on the heifer. Now we can take and go ahead and put that other halter back on. 
while we're at the stall, and then we're ready with that. Now I want to show you as the difference between the we pulled it off when we first put it on versus now. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We notice that a halter slips off very easy. And to me, that's I've watched this at the at the ringside too many times as a, sh a stock show major show superintendent at uh, <clears throat> Houston and State Fair and Austin. Uh, families really struggle with these halters. And when you struggle with the halter with a kid, again, there's anxiety with the heifer, there's anxiety with the kid, but if you can make that process very easy and make the transition a lot better, uh, it, it's just going to make the process so much easier, and they're going to be ready to go into that ring. Because, guys, at, at the major shows, it's the little details that matter. The competition is so tough at all levels, even the county fair level, but especially at the major shows where you have many, many ca uh, heifers in the class or steers up to 70 to 100 head in a class, you've got to really you know, be, be on point. And even just the slightest misstep when they go walk into the ring uh, can make or break an exhibitor uh, with that. And so uh, those are some tips of kind of when we put the halter on and again, just, just a little bit of key things that we think of that are important uh, with that. So the position of the halter, um, making sure that uh, the uh, position is right on the nose, making sure that you've got it put on properly to where it's not tangled up in the halter ring side. The length of the strap. Again, you can see this length of the strap. If the exhibitor's holding that strap, at that chain right there, you can see that strap's hanging down a little bit, but it's not distracting uh, to the showman or the uh, takeaway from the heifer as well uh, with that. A couple other things that are just as we're getting ready to go to the show ring that are some minor details as well. You know, one of the things that, you know, people ask, well, what do you take to the show ring with you? Uh, you know, for us, we're typically, I'm going to have paper towels in my pocket. I'm going to have multiple paper towels in my pocket because inevitably you pull them out of the stall, you pull them out of the trim chute, uh, they're going to go ahead and poop. And, um, and typically at the show, we're going to be feeding them a little more just to try to get more fill in them. So it's going to be looser. You've got to be prepared with that. So paper towels are critical uh, with that. This time of year, when we go to the show ring, uh, we may even be taking a bucket with some ice water in it, uh, ice, and maybe some ice towels. Uh, we may have a spray bottle with some water in it, uh, put in that ice bucket to try to keep them cool. Uh, and even alcohol. If you'll take rubbing alcohol, finally you can get it again, but you'll take alcohol, and alcohol evaporates a lot faster than water, and so it's going to have a greater cooling effect. So if you'll spray the, the under the neck and the brisket of that heifer or steer this time of year, you'll begin to bring that body temperature down, cool them off just a little bit at, at ringside. Um, so, you know, again, bucket, you know, your combs, your typical things, a lot of it depends on if you can take adhesives and stuff to the show ring. But be prepared with, with those things uh, as you go to the show ring because those can make or break you. Uh, other things, if you get to the opportunity to go to the champion drive, it may be an extended time period at the show ring, so you may better have uh, water access with you as well, a bucket of water for those cattle to see if they want to drink. The key is you want to keep them comfortable and, and, and adapt with the temperatures outside in that time of year. Uh, we're in fly season, uh, and that's in Texas, fly season is, seems like it's year-round for, for most of us. And so flies and, and, you know, making sure you've got some kind of uh, aerosol fly spray on hand uh, just because it's going to be lighter. It's not going to affect the hair coat. It's not going to make wet spots uh, on the animal as well, like just a regular hand sprayer would. So flies, that's another critical thing that uh, you got to think about as you go to the show ring. You know, some little details. Uh, oftentimes we're feeding them at the last minute, trying to fill them up. You know, make sure their mouths are clean. Make sure their nose are clean. There's not any nasal discharge. Mouth is clean. Uh, again, as the judge, when the judge walks by, that judge gets a bird's eye view of the nose and the head. Um, to me, as a judge, those are little things that I see. Again, they don't necessarily take away from the quality of the animal, 
it's just more of the freshness and, and attention to the detail. Those cattle stand out more. Other things, the eyes, you know, making sure that you clean any of the, the uh, drainage out of the eyes, uh, or what my mom and dad used to call sleepy out of the eye. So that crusty stuff that develops in the eye. So you want to keep get those cleaned out before you go to the show ring as well, keeping their ears clean. Those are little details that are extremely important that, you know, again, it, it, it kind of takes you down to the home stretch of what you're doing. So the show halter there, I'll get my son to take this heifer here. And then Dottie, let's, I think it's a good time to take a little bit of a, a break for me talking and let's, if you've got any questions out there for me. Yeah, Dr. Clear, really some great tips there with the show halter. And, and as you said, it's such a small detail that really can make a big difference as we get to the heat of the moment when you're walking in the show ring. Somebody asked a really good question that really speaks to something we've been saying for so many weeks we've been doing that and that this and that's practice and you know making sure the animal and the young person are comfortable with what's going on and and you know what they have and so the question is how often and for how much time each time do you practice with that show halter at home yeah absolutely good question so uh you know on the show halter side uh, you know we'll we'll put it on them several times before we go to the first show uh, just to get that animal comfortable with the halter. Uh, once we kind of get, get the animal comfortable with that, that uh, show halter, uh, then we may just practice you know, daily until we get them to where they'll set up with just a regular rope halter on them. So a lot of it, you just kind of have to read the animal. Uh, most of the time, it only takes a couple of times at home with that regular leather halter to get them adjusted to it. Um, but then, you know, you need to daily, it may take for several weeks to get them to where they actually walk into position and they stick and they do everything they're supposed to in the show ring, uh, with that, you know, we've got the younger animals that have just come in in the last two months with the boys projects. Uh, they've been working with them daily or every other day, working on showmanship and trying to get them broke to that. They've got some bigger heifers that were, uh, that are coming two-year-olds now that uh, they, you know, they may work with every week or two weeks with a stick because they've been to all the major shows and they understand the concept. As we get ready closer to our state show here in Texas, Shorthorn Show, and our junior nationals, we'll really ramp that heifer up a, a little bit more. And that a week out, we'll be working with every heifer with a stick, getting ready for that. So Great question with that. Um, you know, with any animal, Dottie, you just kind of have to let the animal tell you what, what, when they're comfortable and when they're ready to go. Perfect. Dr. Clear, you double as both a dad and a superintendent at many of our major livestock shows um, and a really good one at that. We know that many of our shows have different rules, but really we also know from an industry perspective um, perception and things like that. Can you speak a little bit to the differences of halters and the use or, um, you know, what we should be doing with spike halters? Yeah. So, you know, we, we, for years, uh, used a halter that maybe just instead of the chain it had was a little bit more uh, aggressive as far as abrasive to the chin of the animal, uh, really didn't inflict a lot of pain to the animal. Uh, it just made them maybe per se a little bit more uncomfortable. And that really was effective if you had a heifer that was a little bit of a dead head, uh, didn't like to hold her head up or was a little harder to walk. Uh, it, it aided in that. The challenge is, as you look at that halter, you and I, we know that it's really not doing any damage to the animal. It's not inflicting a lot of pain, but from the outside looking in from the perspective uh, it maybe doesn't look as appealing to maybe a consumer that really doesn't understand that the hide of a of a of a of cattle is much thicker and much tougher than than our hide, and uh, not being able to differentiate that, uh, it can pose and look bad. And so, with that, many most of our our major livestock shows uh, have banned those types of halters uh, because of that. And again. You know, it, it took away a little bit of a tool that we had, but I think sometimes we, we have to, you know, sacrifice some of the tools that we have. We got to be careful we don't sacrifice all of them for and, and educate people. But that is one of them that, uh, you know, we've kind of 
pushed away, and, and a lot of our major shows have banned those halters. Uh, the same way with the cable halters as well. That That's a tool, and those cable halters are, are very effective, uh, especially at home and breaking and training those cattle if they're used properly. They can also pre present a bad image as well. If somebody misuses those halters, they can, you know, cut into an animal and do some damage with them. And so they're great if they're used in conjunction with another halter, but if they're not and they're used improperly, they project a bad image. And so here in Texas, uh, cable halters have been uh, prohibited most of our major livestock shows as well uh, from an, a show perspective. And so, again, it's, it's a fine line we have to follow between making sure we're projecting that good image of the livestock industry and with the realization that consumers of today, the people out there, the public, maybe don't understand the difference in what the height of a cow is and what our height is. But we've got to protect our industry. And, uh, and I'll tell you, Dottie, that, that from a dad's perspective, I understand that those, some of those tools are very effective. But I also understand from the superintendent's perspective that those major shows, when they make those decisions, they bring, they bring the exhibitor side up to the uh, uh, table as well as the stock show and the longevity of the program as well. And so I'll tell you, those decisions were not made lightly. And, uh, you know, they just had to be made just to protect so that, you know, future generations can have this opportunity to show these cattle. Yeah, really great, great explanation there, Dr. Clear. And uh, I know that me and you, as well as your family and lots of other people have a lot of fun at these shows. And uh, I sure wanna make sure we can do it for a lot of years to come. Um, speaking on, you know, the idea of halters and, and having control, someone's asking um, for some advice on how high you should hold their head when walking around the ring. Good question. Uh, you know, and I'm just, we'll just project on this heifer right here now. And so as you can see, this particular heifer, uh, she's got a beautiful front end. She's clean chested. And you can see my son's got her head uh to me it's kind of the ideal height there uh go ahead and pick her head up and point her nose into the air so if he does that when he picks her head up too high it may extend the bottom of her neck but it shortens the top of her neck there so it makes her look shorter neck if he drops her head down high one he's going to lose a little control but you can see we we shrink the neck as well so go ahead and put her back to the right position there if we get her set up for this particular heifer, her head is about right, right there. Okay, we don't have her nose pointed up in the air. We don't have it dropped too high. So every animal is going to be just a little bit different from the perspective of, of how high or low. But I think you've got to make sure that animal is comfortable in the movement too. Uh, and that's something you got to practice at home uh, with that. And so Again, I'd like to say there's a cookie cutter. One thing you don't want to do is, Dottie, when those cattle, when you're walking them, you don't want to have to be dragging them the whole time to where their head's dropped, but you also don't want to have to hold them, they're, slow them down, and make their head pointed, their nose pointed up as well. So hope that addressed that question. Again, every animal's a little different. You just kind of have to read what looks best to that animal. And that brings up a good point, Dottie, Really, when you're working with these cattle at home, it, it takes two people. <clears throat> it takes the exhibitor and it takes somebody posing as a judge. Uh, and that posing as a judge, one, I can step back and I can start teaching the exhibitor, well, for this particular heifer to look right, we maybe need to push position her front right foot back just a little bit. And then what a lot of times we'll do is I'll take that halter let the, my sons, one of them come around and see what that heifer looks like there from that side and then go back. And so, cause it is different when you're looking at it from that side, setting it up <clears throat> versus when as the judge, the other ideal situation on the judge side is <clears throat> as, as a judge, figure out in the show ring, what do judges normally do? Well, they're going to walk around the front of the animal. Okay. And so this heifer early on, she was very uncomfortable with people walking right up in front of her. So we've put a lot of time and practice with that. So the judge is going to walk up here. 
He's going to lean in here and he's going to talk to the exhibitor. Okay? Going to move around. Going to come all the way around. The judge is going to walk behind. You can see this heifer, we still got a little bit of work to do on her because she's not real comfortable yet with us behind her. And so that's one of the things that we've been working on on this heifer is trying to get her where she settles in a little bit from behind. So go ahead and walk her around again. So really two people, one to play the judge and the exhibitor so that we can practice where the feet placement needs to be as well as you know acting as a judge to get them out of some of their, the, the bad habits these heifers may have. So uh, with that, some good questions. Dottie, you got anything else? Yeah, Dr. Cleary, you kind of segued us right where we need to go. And that is a good question that we actually got from the first showmanship video. So just letting everybody know, we look at your comments and we're gonna address them. And that question dealt with the size of a circle the showman should make in the ring. And so Kendall just said a, a great you know, example there. So can you speak a little bit to when you're actually in the show ring, how big should that circle be? And maybe even how often you should do it? Yeah, so, you know, when you have to circle in the show ring, a lot of it depends on, you know, if the heifer's right on, she looks perfect the whole time, or the steer, and there's no need to circle, okay? Uh, the more you circle, the greater the chance that the judge is going to see you out of position, or the judge may walk by and miss a look at you, okay? A judge may be walking down the line, you circled, you're over here, away from the judge, and the judge just misses your heifer, okay? That's perfectly fine if the judge is pulling from the bottom to the top. But if he's pulling from the top down, you may miss your spot at the one or two hold there. And so you want to try to keep the circling at, at a minimum there. But we know that sometimes you've got to circle them around and reposition them. The size of the circle, uh, a lot of it depends on how big the show ring is. Smaller county fairs, you may not be able to make as big a circle. The one thing you don't want to do, Dottie, is turn them too sharp to where they look bunched up uh, in it and the animal looks awkward. So I'm gonna show you, Kendall's just gonna try to turn this heifer in just a real small circle right here. And you'll see how awkward this heifer begins to look. She gets bunched up and, and she just doesn't look right with that. Versus if I, we can make a bigger circle around with this particular heifer, you can see as a judge, I'm sitting here looking at her and the heifer still looks good. She's not bunched up, you know. We keep on walking around. Now, the one thing problem I see as a judge and as a superintendent, and that is a pet peeve of mine, and I've really kind of hammered this into my boys as well, when you circle back around, so if, if, if we had to pull this heifer out here, and we circled her around. A lot of times, maybe this kid that's right here, say I'm the heifer in the front here, and I'm gonna have to pull my heifer out. Kids will all, it seems like, they'll pull that heifer out, and they'll try to bring her around, and they'll bring that heifer right back into here, and they'll try to pull that heifer in. And when they do that, you never get that heifer in line with the rest of the heifers. You never can get them positioned right, especially if there's one in front of it. So as you pull that heifer out, you always got to remember that you've got to make a big circle around as the exhibitor. And when you're walking back into that space, you're going to have to go past the heifer behind you, coming in here, then you're going to pull right in here. And when you do that, that heifer is going to be, you're going to be right in line with the other heifers. If you make that turn too short, you're going to be, all you're going to see is a butt view as a judge. Okay. And you're going to get bunched up. And so that's something I see time and time again, as I'm judging as a, and I'm being as a superintendent, kids will pull out, they'll roll back in. But again, you come out, you bring that heifer around, and as you're walking around, you come around at, at the butt of that heifer behind you, and then you walk right back into that position as well. And that works really well. So great question, the size of the circle. Uh, you know, it just depends on your ring size. Another mistake that I see and kind of get a little bit frustrated as a judge at times, you may see a kid that's going to circle, 
and they go all the way to the opposite side of the arena and then come back around. And as a judge, here I am waiting on them um, to get back in place. So again, you don't want to bunch them up, but you don't want to take too much time in that circling uh, with them because you can, you can lose opportunities there. Good question, Dottie. Cool. Dr. Clear, I think the next place we need to go is something that it looks like your boys have really done a lot of practice on, and that's feet placement. We can see that this heifer here just kind of walks into it. Can you talk a little bit about feet, feet placement, where they should be when, and, and for the best view? Yeah, that, this is uh, something that's a pet peeve of mine, and, and uh, yesterday I got to, um, uh, my nephews were down at a local county fair, and uh, uh Another judge that I've known for years is uh, Dr. Ryan Rathman, and he, he commented on this uh, in the showmanship, and, I, and he's spot on. He said, for my kids, and he's got daughters that are showing now too, that we don't, we try not to touch the back feet with the show stick, okay? We try to make sure that animal, when we, when we set them up, they walk into it every time, especially with those back feet. Because if you start touching the back feet with the show stick, they never look as good as when you walked them into it. And so that's, that's an important tip. I stress that with my boys and other families that I've helped over the years, that if you can walk that animal into that position versus to having to poke and prod to get those feet right, naturally they're going to set their feet better. They're always going to look better, but also it's time. You only got a few seconds there. And at the major shows, time is money. Time is everything, whether or not you're going to be successful. So Kendall, go ahead and bring that heifer out one more time and we'll, we'll watch you walk into it. And again, I intentionally brought this heifer out. They've got heifers that are, you know, more ready uh, as far as showing and that are easier to show, but I wanted to, one, we could have a chance to work with this heifer, but also just to show you that it takes practice. It takes working with these animals to get them. So you can see he pulled up, back feet on this heifer are perfect, okay? We may have to come around a little bit, but you could see the back feet, perfect. We've got the scissored approach there. Some people say, well, how much do I scissor them? Again, you got to look at what that heifer looks best. Uh, if you've got a huge bodied heifer <clears throat> that's super good hips, you may not scissor them as much. If you scissor a heifer too much, meaning that front opposite leg is too far forward, a lot of times it'll drop their hip and they don't look as attractive. So you can see this heifer here, we've got her trained where she scissors about right every time there. You'll notice the only foot that Kendall touched was that right, that front left foot. He positioned it into place just a little bit. The front feet are okay to stick if you need to. Still, ideally, I'd like to, hold on Kendall, I'd like to uh, <clears throat> um, position them in the walk-in regardless. So here we go. Here's a great example that, that, Dottie, that heifer was really spot on to the next thing that I wanted to address. And so you can see that heifer, she just went to the bathroom. And a lot of times on cattle, if they go to the restroom, if you don't pull them up, make a circle, they're not going to walk, look just perfect. So I want to take Kendall, and I want him to go ahead and walk this heifer one more time, because you can see her tail head is still up, because she just went to the bathroom. She just urinated. So he's going to make that quick circle. Come back around. Come on, girl. And you'll notice, look at that heifer's tail head. Her tail is dropped. She's kind of gotten back into position there, and she's relaxed again. So, again, that's something I see in the show ring. A kid, you know, a calf, you know, poops, defecates, urinates, and they don't do anything about it. They try to reset that calf with the show stick. And you can hardly ever do that with making them look right. So either you're gonna have to take a few steps forward or make a quick circle after they do that just to get them to relax that tail back down again and to get into that proper position. And so 
as you can see uh, with that, uh, what we like to do is we like to see those cattle, again, walk those back feet into it. You can see this heifer, the boys have made a lot of progress with her over the last uh, month or so to where she sets those front feet in place correctly every time uh, with that. Now, just some little things to show you as we focus kind of on those front feet there. Uh, the stick is a tool that we have, and it's extension of your arm. You know, when I was growing up, I had mentors that helped me learn to show uh, 40 years ago that the stick's an extension of the arm. You know, I still hear people say that today, and it's exactly, it, absolutely true. That stick is an extension of your arm. One, to make the heifer comfortable, so that's scratching. She really likes that. The other thing you got to figure out on these heifers, some heifers like their, their brisket scratched. Some heifers like their belly scratched. You got to figure out what they like with that. Um, moving the feet. So, Kendall, let's move that front left foot. You can see he pulled it up a little bit. He's using his foot <clears throat> to aid in placement of that, that uh, foot there. He also, you'll notice, and this is especially true on this heifer because you still were trying to break her, he uses the halter to aid. So if he needs to put the foot back, let's put that foot back again, you'll notice he's going to push back a little bit on that halter and relieve some pressure on it. Now let's move that foot forward again, Kendall. You see him? He's going to change the direction of his halter. He's going to pull it slightly forward as well. So those little bit of pressure affects it. Sometimes you may have a heifer or steer that when they walk into it, they always want to throw their front right foot out. Okay. And again, there's a structural design issue up in their shoulder. So they just automatically, they, instead of planting them like this, they kind of throw them out a little bit. To do that, you got to work with them at home to use that show stick, use the pressure of the halter to pull that foot back in and get your placement right as well uh, with that. And so those are critical things you got to get comfortable with at home when we're talking about the show stick. So the, again, just as I mentioned earlier, avoid using the show stick on the back feet if at all possible. We don't like to at all because <coughs> they do not set right. The front feet, yes, you can move them and put them into position. Ideally, you'd like for them to, when you walk up and stop, then you got them set in place. The walking into it takes a lot of practice at home. One, especially if you've got a new exhibitor, that kid has to understand the process. Because you, if you take a half a step, it doesn't work out. You got to get it like synchronized swimming. Uh, you know, I always tell the boys it takes two steps to get them back into position with that. And so practice that at home over and over again is really critical. The other things, techniques that we'll utilize, uh, we mentioned this before, is making sure that head is straight in line uh, the, the best way it looks possible. I like the exhibitor to stand back and get out of the view. And so if Kendall gets real close and bunched up to that heifer, we've taken the way, we've taken that view from the neck there. If he steps back, now we can see how streamlined this particular heifer is out of her front end uh, with that. Some other things that we'll do in, in your heifers and steers, you may have to loin them a little bit. When we loin, we mean actually use that stick to drop their back a little bit. Uh, as well. Every heifer is a little bit different in, in, with that. Come on, girl. That's why we're working with them. Pull up. There we go. Dr. Clear, I think what's becoming really apparent here is that when it comes to showmanship, especially at big shows, but really all the time, big it's time. the small, fine details that can really make a big difference when it comes down uh, to the wire. And so you've done a great job of talking about those little details that can really make an animal shine. However, with showmanship, we really know that it's a two-part equation, time. the animal looking the part and the young person doing their part um, to make it look as such. So we had a really good question come in related to the exhibitor. And so the, the viewer listening with us today wants to know more about your take on body language, ring presence, and maybe the facial expressions of the exhibitor while they're in the ring. 
Good question, Dottie. And and before I address that, I wanted to, to make the comment again. Sometimes um, people think for those exhibitors that, you know, it just everything works for them. It You know, their calves are gentle. You know, they get to the show and they set up perfectly. It always just works for that particular exhibitor. And, and that's the reason we chose this heifer here today to talk about showmanship is because you can see this heifer, Dottie, she's got a little bit of attitude with her. And we've been really working on her to, to get some of that attitude out of her. And she's been probably one of our most difficult heifers this year. She's not mean or anything like that. She's just skittish. We, have, we took her to a show uh, two weeks ago. The show's actually by train tracks, so it's really convenient and loud, and you know we're getting that out of her. But we still got a lot of work to do over the next couple of weeks before we get ready to take her to the state show, Shorthorn Show and the Junior Nationals. But my point is, kids, don't get frustrated when you've got a, a challenging heifer like this because very few of these cattle that we get ready for the show ring are what we term automatics. There's always some that just may be a little more difficult than others. Uh, Kendall's heifer last year that was champion shorthorn heifer at uh, San Antonio, she was too gentle. She was extremely gentle. She did. She was lazy. And so we really had to work hard to get her uh, moving and going and the leading. She was stubborn. Uh, and it took a lot of effort to get her to that point, and it finally we did. And she she was a breed champion in San Antonio and won a scholarship. So it doesn't come easy uh, with that. So Dottie, I just wanted to bring that out before I ask answer that question. The question on <clears throat> presence in the show ring. Okay, uh, one of the things that you'll hear me when I judge showmanship is I like for the the kid to look calm, cool, and collected. Okay, they've got a little, they're, they're not nervous, so they're not scratching and jittery. And, you know, I see these kids that, you know, they're just amped up and they're rubbing. I see some of them that are, you know, standing here with the heifer and, and they're all rigid, humped up, and, you know, they look awkward out there. What I want is a kid that walks up there and is relaxed, okay? Now, on the flip side, they also have to have a little bit of fire in their eye, too. You don't want a kid that's doing this, looking around, you know, just too cool. You got to have that balance between, you know, one that's comfortable. As you look them in the eye as a judge, you can tell that kid wants to win. He's got fire and determination in them uh, with it. Uh, one of the things that I'll tell you this little bit of story, Dottie, you know, for me, I, I like kids when they're in the show ring, I like to see some intensity out there. And I, I you know, one of the things that I, I don't know why parents tell kids this, but uh, they tell them, you got to smile to the judge. You got to smile. And you see all these kids walking in and they're all doing this. You know, it's a fake smile. You know, it's cheesy. That's not natural. All right. And so, you know, my two boys, you can see Kendall, the older boy, he was just here, and he's intense when he shows. Uh, my younger son, Cannon, never stops smiling. Whatever he does, he doesn't smile. So when we first started showing, I told him, Kendall, Cannon, I don't want to see that big smile. I need some intensity in the ring. I need some fire like you want it. And so the first show or two that we went to, um, he looked awkward out there. He kind of had a you know, frown on his face, and and he just was not doing a very good job showing. And finally, my wife, she said, Jason, you've got to let the boy be natural out there. Let him smile. That's just the way he is. So I've got two extremes there. I got one son that's intense. I got one that that's just the way he is when he smiles in the show ring, uh, and it's natural. So I think the key thing is you got to have a balance between some intensity out there, some composure, show ring presence, but those kids got to have a little bit of fire in them, you know, and, and that's the other thing that I tell my boys as we're preparing, you got to look for the next problem around you, okay, because there's, there's bombs everywhere out in a show ring, and it could be somebody walking down the bleachers, a kid, and they drop something and your calf gets startled. It could be a calf that gets loose 
out in the show ring. It could be another exhibitor that comes in and covers you up. You've got to look out and around and find the problems and think of solutions to those problems before you get into yourself in a mess and you get covered up or you have problems with your calves. So that comes with experience. And the more trips that these young kids can make into the ring, the better off they are. For our family and our boys, uh, their first year that they started showing, we went to a lot of jackpot shows. And the reason we did that was we were trying to practice to get ready for the major shows to where they had that ring presence. As they get more time in the ring and get more maturity, they get better and better uh, with that. So kind of a balanced approach, Dottie. I, you know, I like to see a kid that's calm, cool, and collected. They got a little fire, but they're not just standing around looking for butterflies, so. Great explanation there, Dr. Clear. I'll tell you what, we are creeping up on our time together, but our uh, folks watching today have some really good questions. So I'm gonna keep those rolling if that's okay with you. Yeah, we got time for a couple more. You bet. So our next one has to deal with the show stick and its position or how you hold it when you're walking around the ring. Yeah, so good question. So one, the, the point needs to be down uh, with that show stick and, and that is critical. Um, you know, I see kids walking around with it up in the air. Well, I mean, that show stick is pointed. And if you're walking like this, you got a chance, just like a loaded gun, you can poke somebody with that or poke another calf. So you want to hold that show stick and, and keep it in a downward position. And so uh, with that, kind of have to, you know, take this heifer. And, and a lot of it depends, you know, I see kids that hold the show stick way up here. Well, that's not natural. I see them dragging them. That's not professional. You want to have that show stick and you hold it. And a lot of it depends on the heifer. If you've got a headstrong heifer that likes to go or a steer, you may have to position that show stick in front of their nose because that's kind of like a, a little barricade with that. But most of the time, they're going to hold it kind of at this position right here where it's natural when they're walking that calf. You can bring it up and use it as to slow a calf down. You can drop it down as that animal needs to walk. So again, position it just about like this. That's a natural position. A no-no is you don't want to have it sticking up in the air because then it's a uh, javelin. Uh, the other thing that I see with kids is that you need to practice this at home is the transition from going from the left hand or the right hand leading to the left hand. And that transition as you move the show stick back and forth is really critical. And uh, practice with these little kids at home. I see a lot of awkward moments where kids, where they're walking up there and it takes forever to make that transition from this position to this position. And so that's another little tool and important thing there. So show stick placement, that's a great question. Big thing that I see is keep them pointed to the ground. Don't turn them over uh, up uh, where they're, and walk with them this way uh, with that. So good question, Dottie. Dr. Clear, one thing that we really enjoy in the Youth Livestock Program, whether it's in cattle or any species, is that we have judges who really care about young people and really care about what they know about their livestock. So one question we had come in deals with questions and what are some questions that livestock exhibitors should be prepared for or should be expected to know when they enter the show ring, whether it be for a normal placing class or a showmanship class? Great question. I mean, just some basic knowledge. Uh, if, if it's a breeding cattle show, uh, you know, the basic knowledge, one, you got to have a birth date uh, of that heifer. You should know that. What's her birth date? Uh, I would also know the breeding of that particular heifer as well in case that judge uh, asked, asked what the sire and what the dam is with that. Uh, that's very important. Uh, if they're bred or not, so how far along in gestation they are. Uh, those are kind of the basics for a breeding animal. Market steers, the judge may need to know the weight. So before you go into the ring, know the weight. One of the things that we do whenever we uh, turn in weight cards and we get a back tag number, we write the weight of that particular steer on that back tag. 
Uh, and the boys need to know that before they go into the ring. they got to remember what the weight is. When you get into some showmanship type knowledge questions, it really comes down to as a judge is comfortable with if that kid really knows what the project's about. Uh, you know, there's a lot of canned questions. How much feed does they eat? Do they eat? You know, those types of things. But I think you ask those questions and you, you, you may take it a step further as a judge, you know, and, and say, so you're, you're feeding starter grower, but you're only feeding four pounds and you're feeding six pounds of holes. That doesn't seem like very much feed for this heifer. You know, the kid needs to come back and say, well, sir, we're trying to, uh, you know, make it to where we don't put too much energy in her diet because she's starting to get just a little bit too fat. So that basic understanding and knowledge of that animal in the project is really important as well. Every judge is a little different when it comes to showmanship. Uh, for me, as a judge, I don't get as hung up on the questions as I get hung up on whether or not they get those cattle placed and presented properly in the show ring and do it quickly every time. So good question. Good deal. Dr. Clear, we have two questions to, to kind of wrap us up. The first one I think is going to be pretty quick, but one of our viewers is interested in your opinion on hats in the show ring. Great question. Okay. So caps, I, they're out. Okay. Kendall wore one today because we're in the barn working at home. Uh, hats, I think it's up to the exhibitor. Okay. The key thing is you don't want, if you've never worked with that animal, at home without wearing a cowboy hat and the kid has never worn a cowboy hat it can create an awkward moment in the show ring one the calf is not used to a big cowboy hat right next to it but also the kid doesn't understand it as well so i think it, it comes to personal preference for my boys they don't wear a cowboy hat in the show ring um uh, i never did uh and and they don't and so that that's a personal preference but as a judge i think the key thing is that you know the kids got to be comfortable in that so you know if you go to the store right before the show and buy a cowboy hat and then walk in the ring with it as a judge you can tell that it just doesn't jive and it and the animal and the kid are not comfortable so exactly i agree dr clear that professionalism and being comfortable and ready in the ring is what's most important as we kind of wrap up i have one last question for you um, to kind of just tie a bow on what we've been talking about. And I think that part of showmanship, a huge part of showmanship is the importance of being respectful and courteous to other exhibitors, as well as show officials, superintendents, and especially our volunteers who put so much time and effort into making shows such a great experience for our young people. Can you speak just a little bit to that regarding um, being courteous in the show ring to other exhibitors and other members of the show who are there trying to make it a big success. Absolutely. You know, I tell my boys when you go in the show ring, uh, you know, you're competing against all everybody else in there. When you come out of that show ring, and, and while you're in the show ring, you're courteous to them. Uh, if they need a tailing or something like that, you offer the hand. Uh, you do not ever do anything malicious in the show ring to take away from another kid's animal. Okay, you may position your animal to make it look better, but you never do anything in the show ring that that really hurts another exhibitor ever, period. You're always showing up. You're never showing down. And that's important to us. The other thing is when you walk out of the ring, if you if you got beat that day, you go to the exhibitor and beat you and you say, congratulations, calf look great and, and move on. You may not agree with what the judge did. Okay but you gotta take it as it is because that judge sorted those cattle today. The worst thing that a kid can do is in the show ring, and I've seen this happen at major shows, you know, a kid gets pulled, the judge pulls at him, he doesn't win or she doesn't win, and they do this. They jab their stick in the ground or they start mouthing out in the show ring. As a judge, unfortunately, you remember those kids more then you remember the kids that, that conveyed the best message out in the ring. And so your attitude in the ring, you're reflecting that upon the judge who may be somebody that's some, you know, down the road you may come in contact with. Everybody else, 
but also you represent your parents and family as well. And that's unacceptable. And so my boys love to win, Dottie. And, but the one thing I tell them is if you get beat, you come out of the ring with pride. When we get back to the show box, when we get home, we get in the truck, we can express those feelings that we may have and we'll talk about it. We may be upset, but we never want to put on a, a, a bad show out there in the ring and make a fool out of ourselves. Same thing with these superintendents and officials. You got to remember these major shows, uh, and I say this time and time again, most of the people that complain about show officials or county fair officials or whatever, they're the same people that never volunteer and give their time back to the community in those shows. They show up at the show and then they go home. And so you got to realize superintendents, volunteers at major shows, those people, they're volunteering their time. Those, commi those committee people and volunteers, they may be an attorney, a doctor, a dentist. I, I met them from all walks of life at the Houston Livestock Show. Those people are devoting their time for our kids and our families, and we better respect them uh, with that. So again, I think that's important that, that, again, we're talking about building kids. And when I mean we're building kids, the things that we convey to them and their actions in the show ring, we will see some of those character flaws exhibit down the road. You know, we're in a time, Dottie, that, you know, we're seeing some turmoil in the country and, you know, people looting stores and stealing. You know, that's not right. You know, and you wonder what actions prior to them, uh, you know, made those people to where they think those kinds of things are acceptable. So, you know, ethics is important in a ring. And again, I tell you, my boys are competitive as anybody. I'm competitive as anybody. And, you know, if I don't think we get a fair shake, you just got to bite your tongue and take it as it is. And sometimes you win and sometimes you lose, but don't do anything stupid. And I've seen a lot of dumb things happen in the course of my time as a dad, as well as, of course, as a superintendent as well, and judge at a major show. So hopefully that addressed that question, Dottie. It absolutely did, Dr. Clear. Um, well, I tell you what, that, that was a really good way to wrap up our time together. I think we can all agree, you know, we all have differences in terms of exactly how we like to set up cattle, exactly how we like to feed them or select them or all these things. But I think one thing we can all stand together on is that this project is meant for raising young people and, and we're really proud to do that. So um, as we wrap up, we still have, um, you know, folks were asking great questions today. So I want to remind them or encourage them that they can certainly keep asking those questions in comments on our Facebook page. And we'll do our best to address those, um, you know, either in the coming weeks or we'll just type it right back to you if we have a good explanation for you on Facebook. I also want to remind everybody to share this post because like you mentioned, we're getting back to normal and that is great. So people might not have been right by their phone or right by their computer this afternoon, but if we share this video, they'll be able to catch it tonight or in the coming days. So be sure to do that. Dr. Clear, like you mentioned earlier, we are going to take a break next week because we are getting back to normal and we are excited for that. So uh, we won't be with you next Thursday, um, but be on the lookout. We're going to keep promoting things like this, other resources, yeah. upcoming videos on our Facebook page, which is Texas Youth Livestock and Agriculture. So if you're watching this video, please like our page so you see everything we have coming out. Dr. Clear, it's been another great session. Lots of engagement for the, from the people watching. Lots of great tips from you. Really appreciate your time and, and being on here with us today. Excellent. We, we certainly appreciate everybody. We've enjoyed the last uh, three months as we've been kind of in a quarantine state uh, here. We're excited. We're kind of getting back to normal. It's so much fun getting back to showing the cattle and seeing the kids hard work pay off and getting back into the show ring. And keep on typing those questions because we will address them. Uh, with sessions on down the road as we get into later into the summer and the fall. Uh, we're going to continue to do these periodically, but it's been a lot of fun uh, with that. And so with that, Dottie, we appreciate it, and uh, we hope you have a good afternoon.